The Euphrates River, a historic watercourse, has had a crucial impact on the course of human history. Nevertheless, in recent times, it has been progressively desiccating, leading to an unprecedented period of drought that has affected millions of individuals. Stretching from Turkey through Syria and into Iraq, this extensive river has been the primary water source in the area for more than 10 millennia, enabling human societies to prosper and thrive. Nonetheless, the dwindling of the Euphrates has been somewhat anticipated as it aligns with a frightening prophecy that appears to be actualizing. The Euphrates River begins in Turkey and flows through Syria and Iraq before emptying into the Persian Gulf. It is the longest river in Western Asia and one of the two main rivers that define the region known as Mesopotamia, which means the land between the rivers. The other river, of course, is the Tigris. The history of the Euphrates River is closely tied to the history of civilization itself. The river was a major factor in the development of ancient Sumer, one of the first civilizations in human history. The Sumerians settled in the region around 4000 BC and used the Euphrates River to irrigate their crops and transport goods to other cities along the river. The river was also a vital source of fish and other food for the Sumerians, and it was an important part of their religion and mythology. The Euphrates River continued to play a major role in the development of civilization in the Middle East over the centuries that followed. It was a key transportation route for the Babylonians who built their capital city on the banks of the river. The Babylonians were famous for their sophisticated system of canals and aqueducts, which allowed them to irrigate their crops and create a vast empire. The river was also a key factor in the rise of the Assyrian Empire, which dominated much of the Middle East from the 10th to the 7th century by sea. The Assyrians used the Euphrates River to transport troops and supplies and built a series of forts and watchtowers along its banks to protect their empire from invading armies. However, presently, the Euphrates River is rapidly depleting at an alarming pace. This is due to a combination of factors such as decreasing water levels, droughts caused by climate change, and poor water management practices in the area. A government report released in 2020, one warned that if these trends continue, the river could dry up completely by 2040. In 2013, NASA's GRACE satellites captured images of the Euphrates River Basin and discovered that it had lost 144 cubic kilometers of fresh water since 2003. This is a considerable loss, and the rate of decline is among the fastest globally, second only to India. J. Famiglietti, a hydrologist and professor at UC Irvine, cautioned that this rate was particularly significant following the 2007 drought. The repercussions of the Euphrates River drying up are dire. Millions of people in Turkey, Syria, and Iraq rely on it for water, and as the river struggles, international disputes over water access are already escalating. These disagreements have prevented governments from reaching a viable solution to the problem. The countries parched for water may also face a potential public health emergency. A recent report published in the British medical journal, BNG, warned of an array of health crises developing in Iraq due to the difficulty people face in accessing clean water. Diseases such as cholera, typhoid fever, measles, chickenpox, and diarrhea are currently spreading across Iraq due to the water crisis and the government no longer provides vaccines to its citizens. Water, born illnesses are extremely deadly and difficult to treat. The situation is further complicated by the fact that different countries in the region have different interpretations of international laws regarding water usage, making it challenging to coordinate water management practices. The lack of a unified approach to water management is a major reason why the Euphrates River is struggling, and it is also why the situation is so difficult to resolve. The gradual drying up of the Euphrates River over the years is a result of a complex interplay of factors. Climate change is undoubtedly one of the primary drivers, as rising temperatures and changing weather patterns have led to longer and more severe droughts in the region. This, in turn, has led to declining water levels in the river, as well as a decrease in groundwater storage. Poor water management practices such as over-extraction of groundwater and inefficient irrigation practices have also contributed to the problem. The impact of the Euphrates River drying up is not restricted to the region. 
The river is vital in supporting agriculture, and as it dries up, the agricultural output of the region will decline. This could result in food shortages and an increase in food prices, which could have a ripple effect throughout the global food system. The situation is also likely to cause political instability in the region as countries fight over dwindling water resources. In recent times, the drying up of the Euphrates River has revealed a wealth of archaeological discoveries that shed new light on the history of the region. One of the most significant discoveries that have been made along the Euphrates River is the ancient city of Mari. Mari was a powerful city, state that flourished between the 3rd and 2nd millennia BC. The city was first excavated by French archaeologist André Parrot in the 1930s. But it was not until the river dried up that the full extent of the city was revealed. Archaeologists discovered an enormous palace complex, temples, and public buildings, all of which provided valuable insights into the city's political and economic structure. Another important discovery that has been made along the Euphrates River is the city of Dura, Europos. This ancient city was founded in the 3rd century BC and served as an important trading center for the Seleucid Empire. The city was destroyed by the Romans in the 3rd century C, but it was not until the river dried up that archaeologists were able to fully explore the site. The remains of a Roman military camp, a synagogue, and early Christian churches were discovered, providing valuable insights into the religious and cultural history of the region. In addition to these major discoveries, archaeologists have also uncovered numerous smaller sites along the banks of the Euphrates River. These include ancient agricultural settlements, fortified towns, and even prehistoric rock art. One particularly fascinating discovery was a series of rock carvings depicting animals, hunting scenes, and other images dating back to the 6th millennium BC. The archaeological discoveries along the Euphrates River have shed not only new light on the ancient history of the region, but also have important implications for contemporary politics and conflicts and conflicts. For example, the discovery of ancient settlements in the Kurdish regions of Turkey and Syria has led to renewed interest in the history and culture of the Kurdish people, who have long struggled for independence and recognition. Similarly, the discovery of ancient Christian churches in the region has provided important evidence of the deep roots of Christianity in the Middle East, challenging the notion that Christianity is a foreign import to the region. The Euphrates River has significant religious importance in both the Bible and the Quran. It is mentioned multiple times in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, where it is referred to as one of the four rivers that flowed out of the Garden of Eden. In addition, the river is mentioned in relation to various events in the history of Israel, including the crossing of the Israelites into the Promised Land and the location of Babylon. In the Quran, the Euphrates River is also mentioned multiple times. It is described as one of the two rivers in paradise, and it is also mentioned in relation to the story of Prophet Ibrahim, who was said to have lived near the river. One of the prophecies related to the Euphrates River is mentioned in the book of Revelation in the New Testament. In Revelation 16, 12, it is stated, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. This prophecy is interpreted by some as a sign of the end times, indicating that the drying up of the Euphrates River will signal the beginning of the end of the world. Similarly, in Islamic eschatology, there is a well-known hadith that states that the Euphrates River will dry up, revealing a mountain of gold, which will cause people to fight over it. The hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira and is found in Sahih Bukhari, a collection of authentic hadiths. The exact wording of the hadith is as follows. The Prophet said, The hour will not be established until the Euphrates uncovers a mountain of gold for which people will fight. 99 out of every 100 will die, and every man among them will say, perhaps I will be the one to succeed. This hadith has been the subject of much discussion and interpretation among Islamic scholars, with some viewing it as a literal prediction of a future event, while others see it as a metaphorical or symbolic prophecy. As now we see the Euphrates River drying up, this is causing people to believe that the end times are near. They see it as a fulfillment of the end times prophecy. Apparently, 
the river is drying up because of climate change and mismanagement of water resources, but such prophecies can't be denied. What do you think the drying up of the Euphrates is? A sign of the end times? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.